Hi, I'm going to go through a basic demonstration of the idea of the trapezoidal rule. You can see my problem here. Uh, my problem asks me to use the trapezoidal rule to estimate, okay, I'm not going to be able to find the actual area, but I can estimate the area bounded by the curve y equals negative x squared plus 16. You can see the curve here. It is um, basically an upside down parabola. x equals negative 1. And I haven't marked that in the diagram yet, but that's a vertical line passing through negative 1. x equals 3 and the x-axis that I'm going to use, n equals 4 trapezoids. So you can have different numbers of trapezoids depending on what the problem asks you to do. Uh, x equals negative 1 is a line over here. Uh, by the way, as I put this diagram together, one of the things you want to keep in mind is accuracy of the picture probably isn't really that important. The most important thing, uh, at least as far as the scale goes, the most important thing is that you can see where the trapezoids are, that you're not misleading yourself with a diagram that's too small or unclear. So uh, anyway, I'll, I'll put in the line y equals, sorry, x equals negative 1 right here, and then x equals 3 is going to be a line over here. The whole idea of the trapezoidal rule is that you're putting vertical trapezoids into your diagram and you're using those to come pretty close to estimating the area under the curve. Uh, so a couple things here. First of all, I'm told I have n equals 4 trapezoids. You do need to take a look at the length of the interval that you're trying to find the area of and you need to make sure that you're breaking it up into increments that work. Okay, so notice here uh, between 3 and negative 1 3 minus negative 1, that interval has a length of 4, okay? Uh, I have four, a length of 4 over that interval. I'm breaking it up into four different trapezoids. Each of them is going to have a width of 1, okay? It's kind of obvious in this example because I picked really easy numbers. You're going to see a lot of examples where it might be a decimal value uh, or something like that, so you do need to be careful. Uh, that's always something you want to check. Does the interval length match up with the number of trapezoids you have? Um, make sure that the width of trapezoid you pick is appropriate. So each trapezoid is going to have a width of 1. Now I'm going to draw those trapezoids in. And again, these trapezoids are going to be tilted on their side. The parallel sides are actually going to be vertical. Uh, so basically at negative 1, uh, I have a point up here. And it's important to know what those functional values are. Okay? If you look at my function here, uh, if I substitute in negative 1, I get a functional value of 15. If I substitute in a functional value of, or an x value of 0, the function is going to work out to be 16. If I substitute in a positive 1, it's going to work out to be 15. If I substitute in 2, my functional value is going to be 12. If I substitute in 3, which is my last point, my functional value is going to end up being 7. Okay? Textbooks don't necessarily show this, but I put those y values on the curve because that way I'm going to be able to see the lengths of my different bases when I draw it in. Uh, I'll show you why in a second. So um, the first point is negative 115. What I really care about is that height of 15. Okay? Now my first trapezoid is going to go from here over to the point at 0. That's the point 0, 16. Okay? My trapezoid goes along there. You'll notice that that just barely fits under the curve because the, technically the curve is said to be concave down. Maybe a term you've heard before or haven't. Uh, but it's going to slightly underestimate this curve. Okay, Depending on the way the curve is, is bent, it may underestimate or it may overestimate. So I have a trapezoid right here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and draw the rest of my trapezoids. I have another trapezoid that goes from 0 over to 1. I can draw that trapezoid in right here. The functional value at 1 is 15. Okay, so I've got one trapezoid that has a base length of 15 and another base length of 16. Now I've got a trapezoid here that's flipped the opposite direction and has the same wavelengths. Okay, um, I've got a trapezoid that goes from 1 to 2. So go ahead and finish that trapezoid there. All of these trapezoids will be slightly under the curve in this case. Remember, my functional value at 2 is 12, okay? And then my functional value at 3 is 7. So you see I have 1, 2, 3, 4 trapezoids. That matches what the problem asked me to do. Now I can go through and use the formula. Um, very important, hopefully you know the formula for the area of a trapezoid. 
the area of a trapezoid is equal to half the height times the sum of the bases. Okay? Relatively simple formula to use, especially for a calculus problem. And really just a matter of filling that in. I do it once at a time. Keep in mind on the AP exam, the setup is the most important thing. You don't even have to simplify and, and list a final answer if you show the setup. Technically, you could stop there, although most people like to go ahead and get an actual numerical answer at the end. So check out your first trapezoid here. Remember, these are the two bases. The height is vertical, okay? It's turned on its side. It's you know, really a trapezoid that looks something kind of like this with one base of 15, one of 16, and a height of 1. It's really what that trapezoid looks like. So use the formula. It's half the height of 1. There's your height times the sum of the bases. We've got 15 and 16 unit bases. There's your first trapezoid. Um, let's see, 15 plus 16 is, is 31. Uh, half of 31, that's going to be 15 and a half. Okay? So you might even want to label your picture with that area just so you can keep it straight yourself. Okay? Uh, I'm going to do my second trapezoid. My second trapezoid actually has the same dimensions. It's one half the height. Height is one times the sum of the bases, 16 plus 15. And again, that's going to be 1 half of 31, which is 15 and a half. Continuing with this, it's going to be half the height of 1 times the sum of the bases, that's 15 and 12. Uh, 15 and 12 add up to be 27. Half of 27 is 13 and a half. Okay, and then finally, my last trapezoid, Half the height of 1 times the sum of the bases. Uh, bases are 12 and 7. And so it's going to be half of 19. That's going to be 9 and a half. And when you add those together, you're going to get 54 square units. Now, if you're doing an application problem, you know, maybe you've got time on this axis and you've got a velocity on that axis. And so, you know, maybe it's seconds and feet per second. And remember that the area is really the product of those x and y values. And so your final units will be the product of whatever the units were on your x and y axis as well. Didn't do that in this case. This is just kind of a generic example. Um, but you know, in this case, it's just going to be 54 square units or whatever the actual appropriate units would be for the problem that you're doing. Okay? Now, if I want to get a better estimation, because again, this is not perfectly matching the curve. It's just very close. I can pick smaller rectangles. For example, I could have rectangles with a height of a half. Maybe I could do eight trapezoids with that height of a half each. And I would get an answer that's a little bit more accurate. And you can keep getting smaller and smaller trapezoids, more of them. And that area should approach a limit, which would be the actual definite integral, the area under that curve. So hopefully that's helpful. By the way, uh, some of you may have um, a formula in a textbook that basically sets this up every time. Sometimes they'll factor out the one-half and they'll factor out the height. And if you notice here, uh, basically this shows up once, this shows up once. Uh, each of all the other heights show up twice. You may see a formula that uses something like that. I would encourage you, at least for the AP exam, not to use the formula. Very often on the AP exam, instead of giving you a function, uh, instead of giving you even sized intervals, they're going to give you a table of values. A lot of times they're going to give you different trapezoids of different widths, or I guess technically different heights. So instead of having a height of one each time, those heights might vary. The formula a lot of textbooks is going to give you isn't going to work for those problems. So don't hurt yourself on the AP exam. Make sure you actually know how to find the area of the trapezoid. Make sure you know how to draw the picture, okay? Instead of just kind of relying on a formula. I think that'll end up saving you some mistakes down the road. So hope that's been helpful. That is how the trapezoidal rule works.